And so this morning, we're just a few days away from what they're calling Christmas. And this morning I want to ask you, is Santa a 2.0 of Jesus? Or could he be the man of sin? Or just who is Santa? That the whole world, I, we were talking a while ago here, down in Walmart, you couldn't even get up and down the aisles. And all of this for Santa. I don't understand what gives this man such power and authority over people. Is Santa trying to do as much or more than Jesus in the way he has presented himself to the world? Has he actually come to benefit mankind? And can he do all that Jesus has done? Or does he think he is Jesus? Or is he really Jesus? in another form. What is his real mission here upon this earth? Is he our savior? In a sense, as I said, is he like a 2.0? You know, you hear about all these different programs that Microsoft and this other ones come out with, and the first one's a 1.0, and the second one's a 2.0, so is Santa a 2.0 of Jesus? And was Jesus just the beta version only? And we no longer need Jesus. We have Santa now. Is that the way it is? Now, where did Santa come from? We all know about Jesus. But what do we know about Santa? Can he just come in our home and do anything he wants to do? Is he under the law? Or is he like the dumb? He's not under the law. He can do anything he wants to do then, huh? But is he like me and you? And everyone else, including Jesus? If he's a 2.0 of Jesus, I suppose he doesn't have to keep the law then, does he? He can do whatever he wants to do. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to save those that were lost. Does anyone think about it for a minute? Does it appear to you like he has tried to look like he is Jesus? Or maybe you don't see it that way. You see him as a total different type of individual. So then, where did Jesus come from? Because this passage in John chapter 1 and verse 1 tells us that He was made in the flesh because He has always existed. Turn with me to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So that means Jesus being the Word, as verse 14 implies, because it says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so he was the Word was with God in the beginning. So we know where Jesus was. He has always existed. What do we know about Santa? Has he also always existed? I don't read nowhere that it says that, but then I don't have a Santa Bible either. We understand from Hebrews chapter 2 that he did not begin in Bethlehem, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 tells us, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, and that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, 
Jesus came down from heaven so that we could go up to heaven. He came to do what we couldn't do. He came that he could destroy the power of death. The power of death that Satan was hanging on to. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus came to destroy the power that the devil had over us. He had death hanging over our heads. That power of death is from the devil hanging over our heads. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. So he came to die so everyone who would accept him, he could deliver you from the power of death. You don't have to die. You can live forever in heaven with the Lord. In verse 15 of Hebrews chapter 2, it says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If you, if you ever thought about dying? Do you know you're going to die? It's not, we can't stand here today and say 99% of us are going to die. Because we'd be lying. Because 100% of us are going to die. There's no 99%. 100% of us are going to die. Not a one of us is not going to die. So he came down to this earth so we could go up to heaven. In verse 17 of Hebrews chapter 2, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful, and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now we're talking about what Jesus came to do. We haven't got into what Santa came to do yet. But we need, if we're going to compare the two, then don't we need to know a little something about both of them? How can we make a comparison without knowing something about what we're talking about? Jesus came to demonstrate God's love for us. But look what the prophet of God had to say about this other individual. And he, this other individual, I'm fixing to turn to Isaiah chapter 14, please. Then I'm fixing to talk about. He makes all these big claims like we hear the Donald making in our politics today. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12, he says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. But God says in verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So haven't you heard a lot of these same types of Boastings going on in our politics today by the dumb about all he's going to do when he comes into power again. And now he's even claiming to be the chosen one. In a way, he, is he a chosen one? Think about that. And then he's going to do away with the Constitution. Yes, now we're talking about doing away with the Constitution. But... When we look at what's happening in our society around this time of year, 
Is it God who's causing all these more violent crimes to be committed, like rape, murder, robbery, suicides, domestic violence, broken homes? Who's causing all this to happen at this time of year? Why are so, if it's such a joyous time of year, why are so many heinous crimes being committed more so now than any other time during the year? I'm having a problem dealing with all this, to tell you the truth. Do you think that God causes all these different crimes to happen? Somebody's causing more crimes to be happening. When people are focusing on something other than God, a 2.0 Jesus, or what are we looking at here? Would God want you to go so deep in the debt just to buy all these presents while you wallow in debt that you are still paying for from last year? Would God have you go out and put up a tree in your house contrary to what the Word of God has to say? Well, I'm saying if Santa and all this is being done, we never hear about Jesus putting presents under a tree. But we've got all these things we see on our TV that Santa's coming into people's homes and putting presents under a tree they have in their homes. But we never see Jesus doing that, do we? Or at least they don't advertise it. We see a lot of people leaving the churches today that have less and less to do with God. But look how crowded the stores are. And people are waiting in line with their children to see Santa. And they're telling me they're doing the same. Wait a minute. They're telling us they're doing this for God. They're doing it for God's Son. But yet they won't have nothing to do with Him. But they will spend all their time with a 2.0 Jesus. Which is, I guess you could say, Santa then, huh? In Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Do not learn the way of the heathen. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, as the heathen are dismayed at them. The customs of the people are vain. Verse 3, He says, For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the workman, with the axe. He says, And then they deck it with gold and silver, and they fasten it with nails and hammers so it doesn't move. Now, doesn't that sound like a Christmas tree to you? It sure does to me. Now, I don't know. Maybe you've seen it in another way. Maybe the 2.0 has got your mind blotted where you can't see what God is actually saying to you this morning. They'll hardly give God the time of day. I just uh, and yet, when I walk through Walmart and found the Lowe's trying to buy stuff to repair my home, I go in there and I see for Santa, these people will pay a hundred dollars or more for a dead tree. <laughs> it ain't good for anything. And then right after that, December the 25th, you see it laying out on the street corner. A hundred dollars or more. Just thrown away for what? Santa? But yet they wouldn't give God the time of day. And yet they say they're doing this for God. <laughs> I'm having trouble with this. Somebody's going to have to, have to, to show me something to help me understand this. I'm, I'm having a lot of problems with it. I don't understand it. Santa is their king. Just like the Donald is the king of these Christian nationalists. Jesus, to these people, Jesus is just an outdated Vega version. <laughs> yeah, of their king. He's an outdated Vega version of their king. In Revelation chapter 9 and verse 11, the Bible says they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit. 
whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Both of those are names for the devil. Did you notice it says they had the king over them? Well, let me tell you something now. This king that was over them was not human. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and if Santa is their king, because there's no other being like him anywhere in this world, I got another question this morning. Is Santa human? And if he's not, <laughs> what is he? Is he an alien? They're talking about all these spaceships and stuff. Is Santa human? I mean, how many? He looks like he did when I was a little boy. And he's doing the same thing. And he's flying through the air. And he's got reindeer pulling a sled riding through the air. In the clouds, if you will. <laughs> Is he human? If he ain't, should we trust him? Well, I, I know one man wrote a song about him kissing his mother in their house. So I don't know. She must have trusted him, but I wonder how that made his dad feel. Adam Sandler, an actor for uh, New Line Studios, is well aware of Saint Nick being an alias for Satan. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but if you ever watch that movie called Little Nicky, it's about the son of Satan. And that's why they call him Little Nicky, Little Devil. The teaser for the movie says, if your mother was an angel, and your father was a devil, you'd be messed up too. But little Nicky, old Nick, Saint Nick, the devil. He's referred to Saint Nicholas as the devil. <laughs> old Nick is a well-known British name for the devil. We find this name is derived from the Dutch word meaning Nicken meaning the devil, and Santa Claus is delivered from the Dutch as Santa Claus, which was also their way of saying St. Nicholas. In uh, Cloud 10 pictures that, that uh, based on Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins Left Behind book series, the name of the Antichrist is Nikolai, or Nick, Carpatha, and one of their books is even titled Nikolai, The Rise of the Antichrist. Is he Santa's children? Or is this Santa they're talking about? <clears throat> and if it is, who is this Santa? That's what we're trying to find out here this morning. Who is he and where did he come from? We know where Jesus came from. He always existed. He took a fleshly body in Bethlehem. He lived a sinless life on this earth and died on the cross for our sin. What is Santa done? And what is he here for? Santa's nickname is Saint Nick, which implies he has righteousness. Who made him righteous? And Jesus is the only righteous one that I have ever heard about. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous. <laughs> but Santa has to be righteous or he couldn't be a saint. Or did somebody just give him that title and he didn't earn it? He says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Does that include Santa in the all? Well, oh, no, it don't include him because he's not human. Then what is he? <laughs> Jesus says in Revelation chapter 2, 
Now, this is only Jesus talking. He, you know, he's the 2.1. He's the, he's the one. He's the one. He's a beta version to some people. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, verse 6. Coming out of the mouth of the beta version for some people. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Jesus hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans, he said there in verse 6. And verse 15 he says, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Is that clear? Jesus hates this doctrine, the things that these Nicolaitans are doing. And Jesus said in verse 16, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now this same doctrine of the Nicolaitans or teaching is what's going on today that Jesus hates. Because Nicolaitans are people who follow a man called Nicholas. Well, you know him today as Saint Nicholas or Saint Nick. <laughs> and Jesus hates the deeds. And yet, you're going to spend over $100 at Walmart for a dead tree for him and you wouldn't give God the time of day. And what are you doing with God's Son who came and died on the cross for you? Also, in the book of American slang, it defines the slang word, Nick, as to rob or steal. To nick something means to rob or steal. Now, Santa may have different names in different countries, but there's only one Santa. And he is unique. He has no equal. Do you know anybody else like Santa? But God said in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 8, Fear you not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have not declared it? Ye are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. God says there's only one God, and that's Him. I don't know of any other God, and that's me. That's what God says. Who is Santa? Where did He come from? How did He get to be like He is, and how is it that He's living forever? Only God is unique. God is the King of kings. Lord of lords. There is no other God. Yet we say that Santa has... <clears throat> no, we see. I watched a commercial, kind of cute little commercial about Wendy's on there the other day. And this man with a lot of hair, white hair and beard, sits down in a Wendy's and he's eating something. And one of the workers in Wendy's, first he comes over and pulls his beard to see if it's real. Then he comes over and says, do you mind if I sit? And he sits down on the man's lap. <laughs> he has hair as white as snow. White as snow. White like wool. His eyes, well, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14, we know what Santa looks like with the white hair now, right? And a white beard and all that. But look what Jesus looked like. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. says his head and his hairs were white like wool. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And so, why did Santa have to have white hair? Why didn't he have black hair? Brown. Red. Well, we, like some people today, even pink or blue. <laughs> Why did it have to be white? Then we see Santa comes from the North Pole. Well, why not the South Pole? Or Europe? Africa? Why not out in space as an alien or something? Or under the Earth? And 
Psalms 48 and verse 2, the Bible says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. Is Santa trying to say he's the great king because he comes from the north? Santa claims or both or looks like he is omnipotent, meaning that he is all-powerful and nothing is too hard for him. And lots of children believe he has unlimited power and they think whatever they ask him, they're going to get. But in Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 27, God says, Behold, I am the Lord, thy God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, why is Santa trying to act like he's like God then? Like he can do anything. Why is this? Is he trying to let off that he's God or something? Or like God? Or what? Santa is also omniscient, meaning he is all-knowing. He knows everything about you. He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for what? Goodness sake. <laughs> and he also knows everything about you, including every secret thing that you do. Psalms 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Verse 2. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down art a, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. So, Santa is like God. He knows everything. And we don't know if he's human or not. I ain't found that out yet. That is he a God? But God said he can't be a God because God said he's the only God. There is no other God. If God's the only one. He says he don't know none other. And so 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 says that even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Well, he's talking about somebody coming that's got power, signs, and lying wonders, but they're after the devil. Satan, or Santa, <clears throat> is ageless. He is eternal. He has always been and always will be as you see him today. He was, when I was a child, and incidentally, me and my wife just celebrated our 61st anniversary. I'm 79 years old now. My wife is 78. And we've been married for 61 years. Yes, that's right. We got married when she was 18 and I was 19. And Santa, was, when we got married, he looked the same as he looks right now. And when I was a little boy, he looked the same way. How could he be human? Because I, everybody else that I know that was as old as he was when I was a little boy, they're all dead now. Why is he still living? Hmm. He's ageless. He has not aged one day in his life. He's the same like the Bible proclaims Jesus to be in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Is Santa trying to say he's like Jesus or he is Jesus then? He's a 2.0 of Jesus then, huh? Santa is a sovereign being. He answers to nobody. He has total authority to do as he wants to do. Who gave him all this power? He has power to come into your home. He has power to come into your home and do whatever he wants to do.
He's kind of like the Donald did, ain't he? Because a Donald can walk up and grab any woman wherever. Well, you know where he said he likes to grab women. I find that offensive. And if I'd seen him doing that with my wife, I'd probably punch him in the nose. I don't care if he is a Donald. Don't put your hands on my wife like that. And look at Santa in there kissing somebody's wife. And that man just stand there, and say, oh well, whatever. I don't know. I, I'm having problems, you know, with some of this stuff here. It's just some of it just don't don't seem to add up quite right. Santa has no wrongs. No one has ever found a fault with him. Just listen to the Donald. He has no flaws. He's broken no laws. Is he also righteous? If he is, how come he's got 70-some indictments against him? <laughs> I'm having problems here now. I see Santa doing the same thing I see the Donald doing. And yet the Santa doesn't have any indictments against him. Is he human? What is he? Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 6 says, We are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> and that word for filthy rags there is bringing up the connotation of something very, very raunchy. Not really nice. You know, and so in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 15, the Bible says, We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but when it was, was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Is Santa without sin? Huh? Is the Donald without sin? There's only been one human that's been without sin, and the Bible just proclaimed Jesus. So is Santa saying he is Jesus? Or is he something else? Because he takes a book and he makes a list of judgments. The Bible says he's making the list and he's checking it twice. Finding out who's been naughty and what? Who's been nice? Doesn't that make him a judge? Well, the Bible says Jesus has a book and uses it to determine judgments. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, he says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Is that like Santa's book? Is Santa's book better than God's book? And another book was opened. Was that Santa's book that was opened? Which is the book of life. So it must not have been Santa's book because this is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. But you say Santa is fair. He checks his list twice. And he's very careful to be fair. John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus again speaking. He says, I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. And the Father himself which has sent me hath bore witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. This is a key attribute of Jesus. The Bible says he's been given judgment. And Jesus judges men and children and women, everyone according to their works. So what's this Santa doing judging us? Who made him to be the judge? Think about that. How did he become your judge? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, 
Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. But you say, Santa gives good gifts on the basis of good works to good children. James, chap uh, James chapter 1 and verse 16, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God alone gives good gifts. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Santa judges once a year, and children go to him to be judged every year. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So is Santa trying to take away Christ's position of judgment now? Judge not according to the appearance of things, but judge righteous judgment. Is Santa being righteous in his judgment? Children confess to Santa, and the first thing he asks them is if they've been good or bad. And if they've been bad, they tell him they're sorry, and he forgives their sin then, huh? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we can only confess our sin to God. How is this man? Has he become a God now? That you can tell him your sin and he can forgive you your sin? Is he above God now? Is he a 3.0 of God now? God is the only one to confess our sin to. If we remember the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, He says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door. What is He trying to say? Enter into thy closet right here. Here's your closet. And when you shut the door, your mouth, then pray to your Father in secret. How are you sitting on Santa's lap? Asking Him to forgive you then. And then he says in verse 12 of Matthew chapter 6, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I'm going to be good next year, Santa. I didn't hear what you said about forgiving your brothers and sisters for taking your toy from you. We need to teach our children the ways of God, not the ways of the world. Children promise God they'll do better next year. But I wonder how they're going to do it if they don't have Jesus. Because Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How are you going to do it without Christ? And they obviously don't have Christ because they have Santa. They don't need Jesus. Santa asked children to obey their parents to please him. But God says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Well, we got a lot of kids out there that is really doing their parents some dirt today. <laughs> they say all sorts of things about their parents and they fail to look back at their own life. Some of these children out there today, oh, you raised me and I'm such a mess. Right now, because of the way you raised me, it's all your fault. You should have raised me different. But in the same token, they're going around having abortions, killing their kids. <laughs> they might not have raised you so well that they didn't kill you, or you wouldn't be out there blabbing away like you are, would you? Oh, well. The way you raised me and you wasn't around when I needed you the most. You left me. And here I am all by myself. 
Is that why you're an alcoholic and a drunk and a drug addict? It's my fault? Your mama's fault? Or could it be yours and Santa's fault? Because both of you have taken your eyes off of Jesus. And all you can think about what pleases you. So murder your children. Go out there and drink all the moonshine you can get your hands on. It's all over TV. They're showing you how to make it. Hang in there. Have a good time on your way to hell. And you're going to take your children with you. And when I look down from those lofty mountains on high, God's going to wipe away my tears. Because there'll be no tears in heaven. Santa comes on the day that you have set aside as the birthday of Jesus. What's that all about? You set aside the birthday of Jesus and Santa comes and puts presents under a tree for you. So you tell me what sense does that make? If you're celebrating Jesus' birthday, what sense does that make? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to ask you something this morning. Y'all getting ready for your Santa Claus and Easter Bunny and all the rest of these fables that you're teaching your children. Do you think these are all coincidence? Or is this Santa's way of getting your children to get you to sign your presents in Santa's name? Like you bought these presents, you're signing Santa's name, which was a lie, it's counterfeit, that you bought from your for your children and you signed Santa's name on them and you put them under a tree. I bet you a liar, a fraud, and what else? What are your children going to think of you when they grow up and they find out there ain't no Santa? <laughs> oh, there is a Santa. Not like you know him or you think you know him. The hour of Santa's coming is a mystery. But every year he comes to every home on this earth. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. But of the day or hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. That's what Santa does. He wants to come when you, you don't know when he's coming. Just leave him some milk and cookies. He'll be here sometime tonight. <laughs> you get up the next day. Oh, Santa's been here. Look at all the presents under the tree. Christ's coming is a mystery. And nobody knows when he's coming. Not even the angels in heaven. And not Jesus himself. Only the Father. So he says in Luke chapter 12, verse 40, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. What if the Lord would come back on Christmas Day? What would he find you doing? What would he find your children doing? <laughs> think about that. What if the Lord came back on Christmas Day? What would he find you doing? Santa calls children to himself. If you've ever been where they have one of them sitting, he calls them from his parents, from their parents, and he takes them up in his arms and sits them on his lap. In Mark chapter 10, verse 11, But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And he said to them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And then he says in verse 16, 
And he took them up in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. Is that what Sam was doing? Is he trying to copy what Jesus does and has done? Is he trying to take Jesus' place? Or is he Jesus? Is he human? Jesus was human. Is Santa human? Jesus got old. He grew up. We knew about his lifestyle. We knew where he was born. We seen how he was born. We knew how old he was when he died. Santa's never died. Where was he born at? Why doesn't he ever get old? Santa sits on the throne everywhere he goes. And it's always been that way as far as I can remember. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Is he saying, Santa trying to say he's a God? Because he has a throne to sit on everywhere he goes? Forever and ever? Jesus sits on a royal throne which is forever and ever. Santa visits everywhere, once in every country, one night, every year. And this is his judgment. And he does this like the day of the Lord. This is the day of Santa. Like the day of the Lord, you could say, huh? Amos chapter 5, verse 17. Is he doing his day of the Lord like God does it? He says, in all the vineyards, Amos 5, 17, shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness. Is that why Santa comes in the night? Because the day of the Lord is darkness? <laughs> why doesn't he come in the daytime? Or in the early morning, why does he come in the dark? He says the Lord, is, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or he went into his house and he leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream but you have borne the tabernacle of Moloch and Shuin your images the star of your God which you have made to yourselves what's he saying about Santa there then he's become your God that's what he's saying he's become your God Santa is omnipresent He's everywhere at the same time. How else could he be to every child's house in every country all over the world in one night without being omnipresent? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6. One God and Father of all who is in all and through all and in you all. Only God is omnipresent everywhere at the same time. So how is it that Santa is all over the world at the same time? Santa shows himself as goodness. And in the song the children sing, they are told to be good for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, here again we see in the Bible, Psalms 25, verse 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Why is it we always, everything that pertains to Santa comes up where he's taking things away from God and doing what God does? God's goodness sake. Only God is good. And only through God can we be good. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, he said to them, Why callest thou me good? There is none good, but that is one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if you want to go to heaven, Jesus says, keep the commandments. I don't know of any churches out there that's going to church on Sunday keeping God's commandments. 
Because they're breaking the Sabbath. And yet they all think they're going to heaven. <laughs> How can this be? Some say Santa's eyes have a twinkle in them. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. I don't think they're talking about the dawn there either. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is Santa trying to change us because of the twinkle in his eye? Santa wears a red suit. Now I'm going to ask you something. Why did it have to be red? Why not black, green, yellow, purple, whatever? Why did it have to be red? It had to be red. There's no question about it. Because what Santa is trying to do, it has to be red. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. What color is blood? So Jesus is clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Think about it. Santa's sleigh is powered by mystical reindeer. And he comes in the clouds. But in some countries he comes on a white horse. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Why is he seen to be able to fly through the clouds a lot of times? Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. Santa lives in a clear, shining sparkling palace of ice kind of a place. Revelation chapter 21 verse 10 And he carried me away in the spirit to the great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Verse 11 <coughs> having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So Santa trying to get across to us that he lives in that holy city. huh? That's his home, that holy city. Santa has elves as helpers in his city. Where did they come from? And what manner of beings are they? Are they human? What are they? Have you ever seen these kind of people anywhere else in the world? Are they aliens? Are they humans? Are they gods? What are they? I need to know. Because I'm letting my children go believing on them, talking to them. Want to play with them and do all those things, and they're making toys to give to my children. What's inside them toys? What's going to happen to my children? They play with them toys. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 21. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Verse 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, and heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, 
and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Santa uses these words, ho, 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 to announce his arrival. What is he doing that for? Is he just came up with that all by himself, or why does he ho, ho, ho? Well, in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5, the Bible says, For I, saith the Lord, will be under her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith the Lord. So is God trying to tell us this being coming out of the north? Think about that for a minute now. Is he announcing to you what God is trying to tell you here? Ho, ho, ho. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Lastly, this morning, as we close here this morning, the very last thing I want you to think about, when you're sitting around, you don't have anything else to do, spell out the name, S-A-N-T-A. -A. Now look at that N-T in there. In Santa. That NT. Let's say that NT means New Testament. Would he put letters inside of his name? Say New Testament. Huh? Would Santa do something like that? NT. Or, what if we took that NT and kind of jockeyed it around a little bit? Just the end of the T in that name Santa. If we jockeyed it around a little bit and we put the instead of S-A-N-T-A -A, we put S-A-T-A-N what do we have? Same. Think about it. How can we be? How can this be? It's even showing us New Testament. N-T, New Testament. God has given us something better to look at. Think about it. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1, I saw when the Lamb had opened up one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four be saying, Come and see! Verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Didn't they say Santa comes on a white horse? In some countries? And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now a lot of people try to say this with Jesus. But you see that bow with no quiver and no arrows. It's a lie. That's what it is. It's a lie. And the truth is, he has a crown that was given to him. Jesus earned his crown. He didn't have to have one given to him. He earned it. <coughs> but this person was given a crown who earned nothing. The land of the north is Babylon. And God is still calling his people out of Babylon. Christmas, as we know it today, comes directly from Babylon. All the way back to Babylon. That's where it started at. The land of the north, north of Israel is Babylon. And God is still calling people today out of the world to trust Him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, he says, Wherefore come out from amongst them and be you separate, saith the Lord, 
and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Have you lied to your children? Or have you told them the truth? Have you lied to them and told them that reindeer can fly? Have you told them there's really a tooth fairy? What other lies have you told to your children? And what are you going to tell your children when they get older and they find out that you've lied to them and you have tried to teach your children not to lie, but you ain't nothing but a liar. No, you can stay and smile and laugh about what I'm saying all you want, but you're a liar. And there's no truth in you. And when you speak a lie, you speak it of your own. Because you're a liar. Just like your father, the devil. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9, he says, Lie not one to another, seeing you have put off the old man with his deed. Now what sort of hypocrites try to teach their children to be honest when they themselves are liars? <laughs> and today's worldly churches are full of liars. Hypocrites lying to their children. And they're even got Christmas trees planted up on their altars and such for their people to come to and bow down before them. <coughs> and not only that, they're breaking every one of God's commandments and they still call themselves Christian. But you know what? God has another name for you. And it, it may be Christian, but it's not child of God. Maybe there are some Christians who are children of God. I don't know. But how could a liar and a hypocrite be a child of God? Oh, you think it's funny, and you're over there smirking. Does God think it's funny when there's a man out there trying to counterfeit his son Jesus who came down here and died on the cross for you? Does God think that's funny? God says in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, Sorcerers, idolaters. That's a crowd of people like you. Could, oh, I'm not going to be around them kind of people. But he goes on. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You're liars. And you told your children lies. There ain't no Santa Claus. There ain't no Easter Bunny. It's garbage that you made up to lie to your children. And for that part, you've sealed your fate in the lake of fire. Hypocrites, you need to repent. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. You've lied. And you're continuing the lie. And God said, don't put the Christmas tree up in your house and you're doing it. And Jesus said, he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans which you're doing. And yet you hypocrites are thinking of going up in some rapture. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Don't you have a mentality of at least a three-year-old? Even a three-year-old knows that he shouldn't be doing the things you're doing. Do you have the right to enter into God's holy city? 
According to the word of God, you have no right. You need to come to Jesus while you can still hear His voice. You need to get out of worldly churches and come to a real church of God. The churches that are doing what God says to do. Not your whore churches worshiping some... I ain't no telling what it is because it's not human. It's not a God. It must be a demon. It could be the man of sin, but I think even a man of sin is better than that. I think this Santa goes further than a man of sin would go. No, I don't know. You have to decide that for yourself. What are you going to do with this man called Jesus this morning? Are you going to say, Lord, Lord? Or are you going to continue to bow down to Santa and do what he wants you to do? Think about where you're at this morning. Do you want to go to heaven? Well, maybe you do. Where do you want your children to go? You want your children to go to hell? You say, no. I say, well, I can't tell. Because what you're doing, it looks like you want your children to go to hell with you. Is that the case? Do you want your children to go to hell with you? Why are you lying to them then? If you don't want them to go to hell, why are you lying to them then? Teaching them to lie and become just like you are, huh? And you call yourself a child of God. That's not what God calls you. You need to think about what you're doing and come to Jesus. Thank you. Amen.